Is your child struggling to learn multiplication facts? My name is Kathleen and I'm a dyslexic here to help other dyslexics. I help busy, overwhelmed parents understand their child's frustration with dyslexia so they can support, encourage, and empower them. Multiplication can be so difficult for students with dyslexia or dyscalculia. This is one thing that lots of people have struggled with. I know that I struggled with it, and one thing that worked for me was actually using music or chants to help with that. And the chants were very, very simple. It was to music, and I still use that information to this day to help me. So an example of that is two times two is four, and I really do still use that to help me recall the information. One of the reasons multiplication is so difficult is because it just requires memorization. And with dyslexia, dyslexia affects more than just reading. It affects memorizing, it affects memory recall, and it affects working memory. So when we're at a disadvantage for these things, multiplication can be a real struggle. So today I'm going to be covering multiplication, towers, and why I think that this strategy could be introduced and help your child better learn multiplication. Multiplication towers can be useful is basically all multiplication is, is repeated addition. We're adding the same number over and over and over again. So this makes that visual and they're able to see it. If adding is easier for your child, then this is definitely much easier because we're just going to be adding to get the answer instead of multiplying. So you must be thinking, okay, what is a multiplication tower? Basically, all it is, is you are literally building the answers on top of one another. So let's take the fives, for example. So we're going to take five and we're literally going to build a tower and we're going to write the answers. So it's going to go five. Then the next one is 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So you're just building the answers on top of each other. And one of the nice things to do about this is you can number it on the way up. So when they have to answer the question, they can look and go, oh, six, there's my answer. Again, we could do it with 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And another nice tip about this is when you build the towers, you can go back and you can look at them to see if you can come up with a strategy or numbers that really work with that. So examples of this is with fives, it always will end in a five or a zero. If you come up with a different answer with like a six or a seven, then that's not the correct answer. So fives always end in zero or a five. Tens always end in a zero. The other nice one is like 11s, it's the number doubled. Or with twos, it's always an even number. Fours, it's the same way, it's always an even number. So there are patterns and when you build the towers, you can start to see the patterns and see the logic behind the repeated addition. I hope you try out multiplication towers with your child. And if you do, I would love to know how it goes. This is a much easier strategy than using flashcards and rote memorization just to memorize those facts. And I wanted to let you know that this month, my newsletter is all about multiplication. So if you want even more tips and tricks about multiplication, then go ahead and subscribe to my newsletter. And I have more information coming out, but I also wanted to let you know that this is a follow-up and more information to my most successful video, which is multiplication tips and tricks, and I'm going to go ahead and link that right here for you. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.